Hi, if you are watching this video, you likely already know what the MCAT is. Because many medical schools consider the MCAT score the most important objective criteria of your med school application, it is important to use every strategy possible to take the MCAT as few times as you can and earn the highest score, ideally on your first or second attempt. While your GPA is also extremely valuable, the MCAT is the only measure medical schools can use to compare you objectively to other applicants. Earning the highest MCAT score you can, or one near the average MCAT scores for accepted students at your target medical schools, should be your goal. In this video, I will answer some of your most pressing questions about the MCAT, including what is the MCAT and how long is it? How is the MCAT scored? What is a good MCAT score? What are medical school acceptance rates based on MCAT scores? Where should I apply based on my MCAT score? How should I study for the MCAT? Let's get started now. My name is Dr. Jessica Friedman. I'm an emergency physician, former medical school admissions officer, faculty member, and founder of MedEdits Medical Admissions. The MedEdits team has been helping students get into medical school since 2007. As a team, we have actual experience in the medical field and the expertise to coach you through the medical school admissions process. I remember one experience on the admissions committee when one faculty member who interviewed an applicant did not think she should be accepted because her MCAT score was so low. But another faculty interviewer felt otherwise. By advocating for that student, the faculty member reversed this opinion and the student was accepted. So, as you watch this video, remember the MCAT is only one part, albeit an important one, of your candidacy. What is the MCAT and how is it scored? The MCAT is the Medical College Admissions Test. The MCAT, a computerized test required for admission to all U.S. and Canadian medical schools, is offered at specific testing centers. It is more than seven hours long and a beast of an exam. There are four sections on the MCAT, and you will receive an individual score for each section. The sections are Biological and Biochemical Foundations of Living Systems, Chemical and Physical Foundations of Biological Systems, Psychological, Social, and Biological Foundations of Behavior, and Critical Analysis and Reasoning. Your MCAT score is based on the number of correct answers you achieve on the MCAT. Wrong and unanswered questions are not scored and there is no penalty for guessing. The number of correct scores on each section is then converted to a scale of 118 to 132 with 125 as the midpoint. The MCAT will total your four section scores for a cumulative or a total MCAT score of 472 to 528 with 500 as the midpoint. The highest score you can earn on the MCAT is a 528 with a 132 on each of the four MCAT sections. The average MCAT score is 505.6, while the median is 500. The average MCAT score for applicants accepted to allopathic medical schools is 511.5. The average MCAT score for entering osteopathic medical students is 503. Understanding these average scores will allow you to gauge your competitiveness for medical school admission and determine if you want to retake the MCAT. The big question is, what is a good MCAT score? At MedEdits, based on how our students perform in the medical school admissions process, we consider a good MCAT score to be 510 or above. An MCAT of 510 or above makes you a competitive applicant for both allopathic and osteopathic medical schools, assuming other aspects of your candidacy are also strong. An MCAT of 515 or above will make you a much more competitive applicant, and a score over 517 should nearly guarantee admission. However, your ideal MCAT score should be aligned with the average MCAT score for accepted students at your target school. For example, a student with a 507 on the MCAT is doing great if she wants to attend an osteopathic medical school where average MCAT is 505. But if that student is hoping to attend one of the most competitive medical schools in the country, an MCAT of 507 would not be competitive. I can tell you from my time on the admissions committee at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai in New York that your MCAT is considered within the context of your entire application and profile. For example, 
If you are an applicant that has overcome tremendous adversity, a lower MCAT score might be easier to overcome. Or if you have exceptional achievements, scholarly, academic, or in research, as well as a high GPA, your MCAT may not need to be as exceptional. What are medical school acceptance rates based on MCAT scores? The acceptance data is pretty interesting. As you can see, almost half of applicants with an MCAT between 506 and 509 are accepted to allopathic medical schools. However, 17.5% of applicants with scores over 517 were not accepted to medical school last year. So, a high MCAT score alone will not guarantee your admission to medical school. If you have a lower MCAT score, you should ideally have a higher GPA to balance your academic profile. That said, there are many factors that impact an applicant's success as medical school admissions committees review applications holistically. This is why your experiences, personal statement, work and activities entries, secondary essays, and interview performance are so important. Now, I bet you're wondering, what medical schools should I apply to based on my MCAT score? These are very general guidelines about where to apply based on your score and assumes your GPA is 3.5 or above. Ultimately, when deciding where to apply to medical school, you must also consider your state residence, ethnicity, disadvantaged status, and other factors. Generally, if you have an MCAT score of 505 or below, consider applying to your state allopathic medical schools depending on the average MCAT for accepted students and apply to osteopathic schools. MCAT scores of 506 to 509 apply to your state medical schools and consider applying to a handful of additional allopathic medical schools and 15 to 20 osteopathic medical schools. For MCATs of 510 to 514, apply to your state schools and 25 to 30 carefully selected allopathic medical schools. Consider, depending on other factors in your profile, applying to a few top tier osteopathic medical schools as well. MCATs of 514 or higher apply to your state medical schools and 25 allopathic medical schools. The higher your MCAT, the more selective your list should be. How should you study for the MCAT? The answer to this question largely depends on your study style and what has worked for you in the past. If you are a good self-studier and have excellent time management and organizational skills, Using online resources and buying or borrowing review books and studying on your own could be a great option. Many excellent review books are available if you need to supplement what you have learned in your prerequisite courses during college. Many students have the discipline to self-study and incorporate the AMC practice test into their study plans. Khan Academy MCAT has some excellent prep materials that were made with the Association of American Medical Colleges, and they are free. Consider a virtual or live commercial prep course. These courses do not vary tremendously in quality, and their effectiveness depends on each individual teacher's talent, which is often difficult to assess before a course. But whatever the effectiveness of the course, enrolling in it forces a student to stay on schedule and create a study plan, which in itself has value. Regardless of how you prepare, it is essential to have an organized study plan to ensure you get through all of the material before the exam. We recommend that students take at least three months to study for the MCAT. What are some take-home lessons about the MCAT? Take the MCAT as few times as possible, ideally once or twice. Take time to prepare at least three months. Aim to earn a 510 or higher to be competitive for allopathic medical schools. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was helpful to you. Please comment or post questions below and be sure to subscribe to our channel. Also feel free to connect with us anytime and email us at info at I wish you the best of luck on your MCAT.